I just got a hard no from a prospect. I haven't moved for six hours. I am flat out lonely. Aww. The life of a salesman is stressful, and if you don't want it to become the death of you, we've got some tips to manage your stress so you can be more successful today on Full Funnel. Hey everyone, I'm Raj Nation. He's Tyler. Le- Wait a minute, that's not Tyler Lassar. That's that's Will Aiken. Woo. Oh my gosh, I wasn't prepared for this. I'm so stressed out. Will, why are you here? Well, you just nailed it. We're on the topic of stress. Sales is a stressful profession. I am the most stressed person on the sales feed team by far. So I thought I'd come in, help with giving some tips on how you can manage stress in sales. All right, Will, well then let's dish on the top three reasons why we're all so stressed as sellers. Top four. Sales stress reason number one, dealing with rejection. A no can seem like one of the worst things that can happen to you in sales. But once you realize that a no isn't that bad, it can actually become your superpower. A no beats a maybe, that's for sure. And what's more, the failures in sales are where we can learn the most. What can you do post no to learn from that experience and get better at what you do? When we hear no, we just kind of hear it and we deal with the crap of it and we move on to the next thing. But do we ever actually process what we just heard? Do we ever process that rejection? Do you have a process for processing the rejection and the no's that you receive? If not, Take out a notebook when you get that no email or you get off the call and they say, we're going to pass for now. Just write down, how do I feel in this moment? What could I have done differently in this sale? What can I do differently moving forward? If you actually process the no, then you don't carry the, the emotion of the rejection with you. You give yourself, just like with anything else, you give yourself a way to deal with it, manage it and move forward. Exactly. And I mean, those no's can be a fantastic way to learn from it. And of course, you should write down, what could I have done better? How can I do things differently next time? But don't take it personally. That no isn't a reflection of who you are as a person. I think we get so tied to our results in sales, and that can actually be a detriment to us. Learn from it, and then move on. Mid fun. Sales stress reason number two, health. I think this is especially challenging to take care of both our mental and our physical health in a work from home environment because you get up, you go to your laptop, wherever it is in your home that is your office, if you will, and then you just sit there all day long. When you work from home, it's really hard to know the difference between work and home. Instead of just wearing your sweats, which is what you might wear when you're lounging around at night or on the weekends, dress up as if you are going to work, not working from home. Putting on a different set of clothes for work, taking off those clothes and putting on a different set of clothes for lounging or hanging out is going to help your brain divide out what is work and what is play. And on that note as well, have a set end time to your day. It is so easy to send one more email, but one more email becomes 30 more minutes and then three more hours. Know when your day is finished. And just because you continue to get Slack notifications on your phone into the night does not mean you are available. If you can create these dividing lines, you protect your time and you protect your headspace. Speaking of headspace, Will, I understand you just did a tech talk review of the app. (laughs) That's right, Raj. I recently did a five-day process where I used the headspace app and actually documented that in a YouTube video. And since then, I've carried on using the app because every day it feeds me one meditation and one exercise that I can do. And since doing that over a period of time, I've found myself so much more able to focus and de-stress and actually sleep better as well. So take 10 minutes to be mindful and do some meditation or do something every day that makes you sweat and you'll naturally find yourself feeling a lot happier during the day. That's actually something that I did a few years ago where I had a personal rule for an entire year. I would not allow myself to have any alcohol, whether it was at a networking event or just meeting friends out in the evening, unless I had first done something that day that made me sweat. And I'll tell you, that commitment to my own health made me so much happier throughout the year and made me feel so much better on a day-to-day basis. And guess what? More often than not, I actually pushed off resorting to having that drink in the name of wanting to work out. Bottom fun. Sales stress reason number three, support. You're not alone. Whether it's part of your team or a wider sales community, there are a lot of people doing what you do. Connecting with those people can help massively in making sure that you don't feel isolated and you can share in the wins and laugh at your own losses. One thing I found really helpful to do as a team is before starting a cold calling block, what we used to do is group up as a team 
listen to a hype song together, all get in the mood to make those cold calls. And then while we were making those cold calls, we had Slack open so we could share some funny stories along the way. At the end of the hour, we would come back together and laugh at some of our losses and celebrate our wins together as well. Did someone say hype song? As the hype man, you know I'm 100% behind that. But what I think is so important about what you talked about there, Will, is the involvement of other people. And it doesn't have to just be your team. Find other sellers within the sales community where you can bounce ideas off another. In entrepreneurship, this is often known as a mastermind group. And if you look at some of the most fantastic and influential people throughout human history, they had a mastermind group of like-minded peers who they could bounce ideas off of, go to for support, uh, and talk out things. Find who your own sales mastermind can be, whether it's like, you know, a small DM group you have, a text thread, or maybe a monthly or bi-monthly meetup that you, uh, you put together where you can get out of your own head and, again, know that you are not alone. Go close. We've reached the end of our funnel. Let's recap. Today, we covered three sales stressors. Stressor number one, rejection. Have a process to process your rejection. Stressor number two, poor health. If you want to be successful, look after your mind and body. You can even check out some apps like the one we mentioned earlier, Headspace, to keep you accountable and give you ideas of things you can do to stay fit and meditate. Stressor number three, support. Whether it's your internal team or finding an external team of peers, make sure you're not in your own head and you have other people you can talk out your issues and your successes with. On that note, if you ever do feel lonely, you can always hit me up in the DMs. I'm always down for a chat. Look after yourself. We care about you. Peace. Oh, that's so nice of you, Will. That's why we have you here today and not that fool, Tyler. Our funnel is full. We hope you can go out there now and fill up yours. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe before you head out of here. Big shout out again to Will Aiken for stepping in for this special episode on the Sales Stressors. I am Raj Nation. We will catch you next week. But until then, remember, desert has one S, dessert has two S's. Why? Because you can't spell strawberry shortcake without two S's. 